yako ya pamba zuko kila wiki pamba zuko gazeti lako rasmi KTN News get the whole story Good morning from Nairobi. This Sunday, we put the spotlight family on the Building Bridges Initiative juggernaut that ODM leader Raila Odinga calls an unstoppable train. Are the chickens coming home to roost? The next stop, Garissa. The BBI rally happening as we speak, but divisions are beginning to emerge. Leaders from the counties of Garissa, Mandera, and Wajer held a delegates meeting ahead of today's rally and want to use the rally to call for action on the issues of insecurity, deployment of teachers, and historical injustices, as well as affirmative action on health and education. Garissa Senator Yusuf Haji, also BBI Task Force National Chairman, has warned against issuing ultimatums to the government. And leader of majority in the National Assembly, Adin Duale, did not attend the delegates' meeting. Similar issues also came to the fore during yesterday's BBI rally in Narok, as Kipsugi's leaders walked out of an advance meeting chaired by Odinga and Narok Senator Ledama Olekina dividing opinion over demands for Maasai land rights. Even more surprisingly was Odinga and his Amani National Congress counterpart Musale Mudavadi's public difference over the position of Prime Minister and whether or not it will have a neg negative effect of creating two centers of power. I'll delve into BBI issues shortly. Meanwhile, the national census results are in with the status quo remaining concerning the most populous communities in the Republic. In the so-called Big Five, the data shows that the Kikuyu community are the largest, with a population of 8.15 million, followed by Luya, who stand at 6.2 million, the Kalenjin at 6.36 million, then the Lua at 5.07 million, and the Kamba at 4.6 million. How does this affect the health of Kenya's body politic in 2020 and going into the general election in 2022? I'm Ben Kitili, live at the KTN News Centre here in Nairobi. This is Inside Politics. For the next 120 minutes, we shall be hel helping you put some perspective on the issues of uh, politics and policy in this republic. Let's begin in the county of Garissa, where today's BBI rally is currently ongoing. And KTN senior political reporter Chris Airo is there for us. Chris, good morning. Uh, what's happening where you, you are? Is, is the rally on? And we understand there are some issues that uh, the leaders from the northeastern region want uh, addressed in this rally today. Well, a very good morning, uh, Ben Kitili and your guest back in studio. We are coming to you live from 007, that is County 007, Garissa County. And this is the sixth edition of the BBI rallies. Remember that yesterday they were in Naro County, but today they're in Garissa County. And currently we are at the Garissa Stadium in Garissa Town. Remember that this is Garissa Township constituency, uh, which uh, the area member of parliament is the majority leader of the national Assembly Aden Dwale. Currently, uh, the ODM party leader Raila Odinga, accompanied by a good number of legislators from the ODM party, have already arrived here in Garissa and they are currently at the governor's official residence, that is uh, Ali Korane's residence here in uh, Garissa town. Uh, they are having breakfast, then they will be coming here directly. But also, we have a good number of leaders from uh, the three counties of uh, the northeastern region. That is uh, Garissa, uh, Wajia, and uh, Mandera, and also uh, including uh, the Marsabit uh, uh, County. Uh, we also have uh, uh, leaders from Marsabit. They are also here. And uh, Ben, uh, there are different issues that, that they have uh, raised uh, here, uh, the, the locals. And one of them is about uh, the teachers, uh, the non-local teachers. Remember that uh, uh, TSC we saw, uh, they withdrew the non-local teachers uh, here in uh, various, uh, in the northeast 
eastern region, uh, so to speak, due to insecurity issue. And the top on the agenda that they want addressed in the BBI is insecurity in the northeastern region. Also, historical injustices. Remember that the Wagala massacre issue has never been uh, resolved uh, since uh, uh, the years in the 90s and uh, the 80s. And uh, up to now, those issues have never been resolved. And uh, there are other, uh, other issues like uh, water, electricity, different issues that they are raising. Uh, but let's uh, wait for their leaders uh, to uh, give the residents uh, what they uh, resolved yesterday. Remember that uh, yesterday they had uh, uh, a consultative meeting that brought together leaders from the northeastern region and uh, they agreed on several pointers, uh, for instance, on how uh, to ensure that uh, uh, security uh, is uh, upheld here in uh, uh, the northeastern region, issues to do with education. Yes, they need uh, more teachers and especially the non-locals. Remember that uh, if you talk about uh, having local teachers, the number cannot uh, really uh, cannot be equated with the number of students. And uh, even the education standards. Remember, after the release of the KCP and the KCSE results, uh, we saw that there uh, there was a drop in the, the results and the number of the students that were taken to the university really dropped. Ben, currently uh, the leaders have already arrived, and that's uh, the convoy of. Uh, different uh, political leaders and uh, we expect that uh, that's the arrival of uh, the ODM party leader from a distance I can spot him uh, on top of their vehicles uh, accompanied by different political leaders that is uh, uh, Raila Odinga I spotted the uh, governor's Ali Roba from Mandera we have Ali Korane from uh, Garissa but Ben uh, to notice that uh, we don't uh, we are not very sure whether the majority leader of the National Assembly, that is uh, Aden Dwale, and uh, who has been a strong uh, supporter of the Deputy President, whether he will be coming here. I can spot uh, James Orengo there, uh, the, 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 the my, my minority leader in the Senate, and uh, the CIA Senator. I can spot uh, Ali Roba there, uh, the Governor for Mandera. They've just arrived there. And uh, this is an indication that uh, any time from now, uh, these uh, BBI rallies should be starting. And uh, going by uh, the weather here, it's really hot, and uh, we don't expect that uh, these, uh, uh, these events will really uh, take long. And so we expect that maybe at around uh, 2 or 3 p.m., these uh, functions should be over. Ben, I'll hand you back to the studio so that uh, we can at least uh, get a chance uh, to uh, set our tripod and our camera so that we can bring uh, our viewers uh, up to speed on what's happening here. Uh, it's back to you, Ben, as we, as we prepare ourselves and organize ourselves, Ben. Mr. Lido, there are KTN senior political reporter in Garissa. Live pictures there as uh, ODM leader Raila Odinga uh, making his way into the Garissa primary school grounds where today's BBR rally is, will be going down. We shall be taking back to Garissa shortly uh, for deliberation speeches, we, what we expect the people of the northeastern region uh, to be saying in that rally. Now, leaders from the Maasai community have shot down the proposal to adopt a three-tier system of government as fronted in other regions. In their memorandum declaration read at Saturday's BBI rally in Narok, the leaders argued that such a move would marginalize their community even further, opposing views on the proposed prime minister post and elusive gender equality also played out among leaders who turned up for the event. KTN's Alan Ochanda was there. The BBI ship docked this weekend in Narok County. It was the Ma community's turn to voice their concerns. Ma leaders voiced their opposition to the adoption of a three-tier system of government as opposed to leaders from other regions. We don't support the regional governments, but we support the blocks, the economic blocks. The community has for ages cried foul over outsiders encroaching on their ancestral land, and that too, they say, has to be cured by the BBI initiative. Leaders have in the past clashed on the proposal to expand the executive by adopting the position of a powerful prime minister. The proposal could, however, be fizzling out as those perceived to be the main proponents, led by ODM leader Raila Odinga, now seemingly taking a different stand. The elusive gender equality issue 
was also on the table, leaders openly differing. Number of gender issues is never legislated in a democratic society. Uwezi nasimisha mwanaume, akitaka kuwa governor, eti nasima, akuwe bibi, akuwe nyuma yake. Hii ni legislation, ni democracy, kiko mutu anaenda kupigia kura, ule mutu anataka. Nataka kumuambia mweshima wanjala ya kwamba, wa mama siya tu wakati tutapea na kura ndiyo tukua maana sana. Wakati wote kama ni kutoka juu mbaka chini, mama ni wa muhimu. Unlike past BBI meetings attended by leaders from across the political divide, the Narok chapter, saw leaders allied to Deputy President William Ruto, especially those who are not from the MAC community but elected in various positions within the county, give it a wide bath, citing open bias during Friday's delegates conference. With the MAC community vowing to protect its sovereignty, different regions have continued to express unique issues that need to be addressed by the BBI initiative and the BBI caravan is expected in Garissa this Sunday. Ala Nochanda, KTN in Narrow County. Ketien Zala Nochanda reporting yesterday uh, from the Narok Stadium that has now been renamed the William Mullins Imama Stadium. Uh, let's get into that. Uh, the BBI seemingly running, running into strong headwinds as various regions come out to uh, you know, talk about some historical grievances that have been unresolved over the years. Uh, that uh, seems to be the next the step the conversation is taking. I have with me my panel in studio this morning. I have with me political uh, risk analyst, the Duke of Mosoche is here, uh, Dismas Mokua. I have with me an Achesa in studio, not the Achesa you might be thinking about. This is Ken Achesa, lawyer and instructor at the University of Nairobi. Thank you, sir, for joining in Karibu. Asante, we also have Gerald Teach Sayi, humanitarian and development consultant, who uh, has been missing in action for a <laughs> couple of weeks. I'm Welcome, back. Gerald. Thank you very much. Uh, as has been Esbon Awila, uh, communication strategist and uh, uh, governance expert. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Um, this must, let me begin with you. Um, what we heard yesterday from Narok, very strong statements, uh, the resolutions by the MA leaders come out very strongly and some people are saying, wait, this is not what building bridges is all about. If people are being divided further, uh, some people are arguing that way. What, what do you think? Well, I think first things first, that when you look at the entire event uh, yesterday in Arok, it was uh, well organized compared to what uh, Charity Chingilu did. So people were given the opportunity to speak. You remember in the other rallies, things were being done in a hurry. Mm -hmm. So maybe we need to congratulate Governor tonight. He's done something as good as what Governor Ngwe had done in Kisi. And we the event this. was skipped by allies of the deputy president. Could that be the reason why it was a bit peaceful, so to speak? Well, no, we are told that uh, Governor Tunai, in fact, is an ally of uh, the deputy president, and even uh, Governor Lenkulol, the one of uh, Samburu. But, but uh, you know, the MA leader sat down and came up with a position, and they decided to do it in a structured manner. And because we've been told that uh, this BBI is a tsunami that is going to take place whether or not we like it, there's an opportunity for everybody to go and uh, present their ideas. But in my view, the most important thing is that uh, when these uh, regional leaders are presenting their positions, they must be sensitive to national interest. So Olekina has got all the rights to present the Maasai views, because in any event, those are the majority of the people who elected him. But he cannot present those views in a vacuum so as to create a national animosity. There would be a number of his voters in uh, Narok who think that his word is as good as the law, mm -hmm. and they can easily resort to violence. So in my view, these leaders must be encouraged that at the end of the day, present the views, issues affecting your community, but do it in a manner which respects our national and public interest. Okay. Because those kind of statements, it now... All that needs to happen is uh, members from two different communities to engage in a bar brawl, and they'll be fired somewhere. And you know, they'll think our leaders have said this, they said it all over yesterday. Okay. That is number one. And then number two, as a nation, there is a boil which is about to burst. So again, we cannot run out of it. These historical injustices. The issue of land is a very emotional one. And if we do not address it today, we are going to address it tomorrow. So even our political leaders at the national level, we shouldn't be running from uh, these hard truths and facts. We should face them head on and come up with uh, a negotiated settlement done in uh, a round table, okay. not in those uh, political rallies. All right, Ken, the BBS seems to be getting to uncharted waters in terms of regions coming out and declaring some unresolved issues like historical injustices and uh, land issues and all that. Um, we did hear that from Narok yesterday. Today, we are expecting to hear the same 
from uh, Wajia, um, Garissa and Mandera, the, north, the north and eastern uh, frontier counties. Um, is, it, is this the direction the BBI expected to take? Thank you very much, Ben. First, we must understand BBI from two perspectives. BBA is meant to achieve a political agenda and a legal agenda. Unfortunately, the legal agenda has gone mute. There's nothing legal, nothing law reform going on in BBI rallies. What is being advanced as we move forward is a political agenda, which is being achieved anyway. Otherwise, you cannot convince a society that legislation, that law, that a legal discourse can take part in a rally such as one we've had in uh, Narok, one we had in Kakamega, one we had in uh, Mombasa, and one we're having in Garissa today. And Raila Odinga seems to be leading the political agenda that is within BBI. And Raila will be happy if he leads this political agenda to the exclusion of other major players, especially perceived opponents. So when, when William Ruto and his allies refuse to turn up for BBI rally, they're not doing uh, the Raila camp any harm. In fact, that is how the camp wants it to go. You remember they dared them to come. They came to Mombasa, and the crowd kept saying, let Korea address. When Gil realized that the crowd will say, let Korea address in uh, Kitui, they had Korea evicted. So the first approach to me was a better approach to the people who are perceived to be reluctant in support of BBI, that be part of the discourse. And then lastly, I do not think this is the right way to go, or we need another force that can advance a legal agenda. Unfortunately, the committee that is supposed to pick views and turn the views into some legislative proposal has gone mute. So they have left the political agenda to cloud the legal agenda, and that will only divide this country further. But, 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 but talking about the legal agenda he's talking about... It would be erroneous to say that the Yusuf team has gone mute. The entire of, uh, last week, they've been receiving presentations. Yusuf Musalem Dabad presented his presentation, Atoli did his presentation, and even uh, Kalonzo Musioka did his presentation. So it would be erroneous to say that uh, they've gone mute. And in any event, at the end of the day, after all these rallies, Whatever these politicians discussed, it has to be translated to a legal document. Okay. And the people who are going to discuss the legal document is people like uh, Oledama. So it's important to have their views earlier on before it goes to the National Assembly and Senate. Now that you say that, interesting. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, Dismas. We did see Musalem Odavadi presenting his views to, to, the, to the task force last week. And then yesterday we saw Raila Odinga um, you know, watering down his proposals in a political rally. Is that, does that work? Uh, and you see what um, Salem Dovad had indicated from his experience in the Nusumkata administration is that there must be clarity in roles. That if you're going to have a president, then you have a deputy president, then you have a prime minister and several prime ministers. Are you going to have uh, five centers of power or are you going to have one center of power? And who is going to be running the show? Even introduced the, the, the thing about the co-presidency. Because the crisis we have today is that uh, one person is the president of the Republic of Kenya, and another one believes that he's the co-president. So, you know, the roles are not uh, well defined. And when you have got that kind of a vacuum, it's very easy for people to keep on jumping every day. You recall during the Nusumukata administration... So Musalia, Musalia has, a, has a point, is that what, what you're saying? Yeah, Musalia has got a very solid okay. point. But at the end of the day, the people who are going to shepherd us okay. is going to be speakers Lusaka and uh, Muturi. I see Ken shaking his head before I come to you, Charo. Yes, I, I don't think uh, Musalia made any strange statement yesterday. In this country, we just have one president, and we have a deputy president. And under Article 152 running to Article 153 to Article 154 of the Constitution, the role of the president is clearly outlined, and the role of the deputy president is clearly outlined. And therefore, if an individual has a perception that is a co-president, that is a personal problem that system can deal with. We don't have to go and amend the law to address the feeling of an individual. All right. Yeah. We'll get into that. Chero, what is your take on what's happening to the BBI so-called train? You know, I've, I've been watching this and I've thought to myself that these are actually, this is actually the 2022 campaign trail uh, for Right Honorable Raila Odinga funded by Wanjiko. 
under the guise of BBI, the Trojan horse that I have been making reference to. And now that the Trojan horse has arrived and from the belly emerges the strong political agenda, the legal angles notwithstanding, the legal angles that will come in just to drive a referendum and to make sure that some T's are crossed and some I's are dotted. But this was actually a response, in my opinion, to the strong front of this person who believes he's co-president who wanted to run in 2022. So we are paying for campaigns right now. That said, when I look and listen to, to what uh, Ledama Olekina said yesterday, I had to smile because I said, if you're talking about land rights for the Maasai community, let's start with some practical solutions. The area that I look at, which is energy, look at where you leave compensations, Loyangalani to Suswa, Isinya to, Na, to Arusha, Isinya Mombasa. You're looking at land, you look at opportunities to actually ameliorate and improve the lives of the Ma community, the Ilchamus, the Samburu, etc., etc. And this has not been done. So when you make populist and emotive statements, we want our land back, which was similar to what uh, Kingi had done during the Mombasa BBI rallies where he was talking about absentee landlords and the need to, to, to resolve these land issues. I ask myself, why do these land issues keep getting thrown into BBI? And we know who the biggest landowners in Kenya are. And we know that those biggest landowners, even in my land, will not be vacating anytime soon. Just like the families in Taita, Taveta, in Kilifi, in Kwale. So when you bring up this land issue, it is to whip up emotion and to horse trade. So the Trojan horse has turned into horse trading for political supremacy. Where do you think those issues should be resolved? The, 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 the Ndungu report. You see, the, if you look at the Ndungu report, if you look also, move beyond that to issues of electro, uh, electoral injustice or, or historic histories of violence in this country, whether it's Ndungu Report, Kriegler, Waki, TJRC, none of those have very serious political or re-election import. But BBI does. So BBI will be used as a vehicle to drive an agenda. But in actual fact, if you wanted to resolve land issues, why don't we go back to the Ndungu Land Report okay. and, and deal with it there? And, and if there's something that I would like to say as well, when you now see the hypocrisy of the Tanga Tanga camp coming out to call Olekina a tribalist and he's talking about Ma for the Ma land, uh, for, for, for the Ma people, etc., etc., the same Tanga Tanga have people living in fear in the Rift Valley in the event that they don't vote correctly in 2022. We are dealing with a bunch of leaders who have been involved in egregious actions of ethnic cleansing, ethnic hatred. These are people who should be brought before the NCIC. So for the Tanga Tanga to start accusing Ledama now, that is utter, utter hypocrisy because when it is expedient and it suits them, they will also threaten. And it was not lost on me yesterday that in 1991, in the same stadium where the Ma Declaration was presented yesterday, uh, the late Ole, uh, Ntimama was telling people to lie low like envelopes. So this is a history. Every time you're coming towards elections okay. or to, to, to maintain a level of political supremacy, you have um, a sentiments that try okay. to divide us. Yet we are nothing more than amalgamation of, of colonial nomenclature that has divided us into tribes and groups and, and regions and it's whipped up by politicians to suit their selfish purposes and never to really impact the life of that one person who would have done with the way leave compensation, who could have done done with some additional support for their own socio-economic sustenance. Okay. Has Bon are we getting any close as a country to that to that uh, to, the, to, to, the, to building to be, being able to build bridges and if what happened in Narok happens in Garissa happens in another part are we going to have a country at the end of the day? Well I, I think uh, the old spirit of the building bridges initiative is to elicit conversations that then would, would forge pathways that would unite Kenyans. And from what I see, I think, uh, you know, we live in a very democratic space where every individual has a right to express themselves. And the protection of that right is a lot more important uh, than they, whatever they're going to say. And to a large extent, you realize that uh, what, what people are seeing are political conversations, mm -hmm. which are very critical. And, and the key thing about the BBI task force and the way it was formed is that in, in the task force itself, we don't have vested interest. We just have a team that is collecting views from Kenyans. So you can imagine how this would have been a very interesting process uh, at the expense of the common monainji. If we had people with vested interests, uh, you know, articulating what uh, Senator Ledamo was saying, so what happens is Senator Ledama Olekina is expressing himself just as a politician. 
What the task force has to do is to collect all these views and then collate these views and then package these views into a document that can then be subjected to Kenyans. So at no point am I seeing a situation where whatever any politician says in a public rally is going to be subjected to Kenyans to endorse. These things have to be collated. And it doesn't, it doesn't really mean that uh, when, when, when people make such outlandish statements like the Ma rights and, and everything, that that's the end of it. I actually appreciate that, you know, uh, and, and, and I appreciate for the simple reason that not many people uh, I have been engaging with BBI, but when you have political leaders make such statements, what does it do? It arouses interest. Right. And now people want to contribute and say, I mean, what, what exactly is going on here? If we leave this process to the politicians, then we, this is the direction we are likely to take. I'm sure there are people who live in the Ma community right now as professionals, as investors, as, as people who have lived with them, who actually now are interested in what is going on for the simple reason that there is a statement that has been made that is actually a threat to their existence as investors, as people who have lived with the Mark Committee. So they would also come out and okay. articulate the issues and probably present to the BBI. But a phrase what, what Raila Odinga said yesterday is that the Mark people spoke without holding back. Yes. This is what the BBI is all about. It's all about. The country needs. Yes. Do you and, agree? Uh, yes, I did. And you see, if you look at what, what, what the Ma community presented, look at what, what uh, Sen uh, Governor Olelenku said, it's actually in opposition to what Raila has been saying, the three-tier system of government. But you see, that's the essence of it, that we need to have conversations so that the different ideas from different quarters are then brought together, okay. collated, so that we have a working formula. What works for... Because this country, we, we are not going to forge a cultural nationalism if we attend to ethnic nationalism issues. We live in a world where that pristine Maasai culture, uh, I, sorry to say, is non-existent. I come from Igori. My MP is called Junet Mohammed. At no point is he Luo, but he's a naturalized Luo. He's one of us. Okay. So you cannot tell Kenyans that you, ca you, you, you can only represent people because you are a native. Good point. Yeah. Uh, Chero, very quickly before you, you, you know, go forward. Uh, were you going to mention Wanjala? Are you yes, going to make reference? We're, we're still on this. Oh, we will, we will come. Okay, we'll come okay, back. I'll wait. I'll wait for you to get there. But, but, but you know, what I wanted to say is even if we present our views, and this is why, and I've gotten attacked uh, numerously, severally for my position, even if we present our views, we have told, pen, we have been told, pendem si pende referendum in Akuja. So even if we spend our time debating, discussing, inputting, going back to the steering committee, sharing like what Honorable uh, uh, Musalia Mudavadi did the other day and others, we share, we share to what end? Ultimately, we are retrofitting something that was already decided in some back rooms, which is around the politics of succession. Right. So while Raila is busy campaigning, you notice, one of the things I notice is where is His Excellency the President? If this BBI was a handshake between the two gentlemen, how come he is conspicuously absent or in the background and letting Right Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga be the one who is front and center of all these events? Is it because they have already decided and agreed what will happen and the executive presidency will go to him and the silent, not so powerful, but very powerful prime minister will go to a camp uh, decided by the, the, the Uhuru, uh, by the Kenyatta family? Right. So you look at it and you say, we are being sent around in circles. Yet locusts are ravaging us. Yet our health is bad. Yet we cannot afford yes, electricity. Yes, so I always bring it back to the basic issues that ultimately, what is this BBI doing for Kenya? Just hold that thought, Desmond. Yeah. Let's, take a, let's take a quick commercial <laughs> break here. And inside politics on KTN News, we are still on the BBI issue, the BBI's moment of truth, the hour of reckoning. Remember, we are live in Garissa from the Garissa Primary School where today's BBI rally is said to be uh, starting any time from now. The leaders are making their way there. We shall be taking you there live for the proceedings and the speeches. We, when we come back, we shall be talking about the issue of uh, the Prime Minister position, which has seen uh, Raila Odinga and Musalem Mudavadi differ quite publicly on this and whether or not it creates uh, two centers of power and uh, whatever is happening with the, the, the three-tier system of government 